You know, just when I think that Pastor Mike Todd can't get any worse, he does. He continues to top himself on a regular basis, this time facing backlash for pouring syrup and whipped cream on a Bible. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk all about it in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you on the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. And for someone like me, well, it's kind of my only option. I remind you guys as well, if you enjoy and appreciate the work I do here, why not consider blessing my ministry with a generous donation? I could really use your help. There's a couple different ways you could do it. One easy way, just click that super thanks button down below on this video here. That is how you can tip me with a one-time donation of any amount. Whatever you can contribute, it helps and adds up. doesn't matter how small or how big or become a premium member of Not By Sight News. You can join my Patreon today for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash News. Link in the description. When you join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. I always take care of the Patreon members first. You also get exclusive links over there to these topics that we discuss. I include them up on Patreon now, the way things are getting on YT. I just can't take any chances of putting certain links in there they don't like. So it'll be for you on Patreon. Also there, comment censorship free on all videos and even send me DMs. So check it out again, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, link in the description. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Where do I begin with this? Look, first thing, let me just say this because there'll be some that maybe try and argue with this, but the Bible is clear saying that you will know somebody by their fruits. And Mike Todd, for quite some time now, has shown nothing but rotten fruit. I would also argue with you that Mike Todd is not even saved. And I can give you plenty of examples why I come to that conclusion. Let's just take recently. You know, Transformation Church, they held the funeral service for Carlton Pearson, uh, who we know passed away here, you know, several weeks back. And Mike Todd was real close with Carlton Pearson and Todd, during the funeral service, talked about how Pearson was smiling down on all of us from heaven. This is a man in Carlton Pearson who not only denied the existence of hell and preached that false doctrine for about 20 years, but he also advocated in favor of, you know, affirming the LGBT and all sorts of other left-wing positions that completely, completely contradict Christianity. Yet here was Mike Todd singing this guy's praises, talking about how he's a man of God and how he's looking down upon us. No, no, I would argue with you, Michael Todd, that Carlton Pearson is not looking down, but instead he's looking up and realizing the error of his ways, except for him, it's now too late. We could also get into the fact that you know, Todd had that famous illustrated sermon where he was rubbing his own snot all over his brother's face in an attempt to try and recreate the miracle where Jesus, you know, rubbed spit into the blind man's eyes and healed him. Of course, we could also talk about his, you know, worldly performances for Christmas and Easter where he, you know, plays secular music and has all sorts of, you know, inappropriate type of dancers up on stage doing things that you would find more in a club, not in a church. Uh, how about his crowd surfing? How about the fact that he said that he wishes that Jesus would have been more clear when it came to the topic of the LGBT and try to actually say that, well, if you take a look at our church name, it's called Transformation Church. See, trans is in it. See, yeah, I could keep going on and on, <laughs> but I think you get it. So let's talk about this latest. In the January 28th sermon from Transformation Church entitled Fit to Finish, this is where I think if you needed, you know, if you didn't listen to any of those other examples, if you didn't know, this right here shows you everything that you need to know. I also will tell you this, that, you know, Charles Spurgeon once said that there would come a day where, you know, pastors would trade sound doctrine into basically, you know, being clowns entertaining the goats. That's exactly what we have in Mike Todd. He is a clown. He is not saved. He needs to be saved. Yet there are still so many people that flock to this man and to his church because it serves as an entertainment venue for them. It's not about what does God have for us today. 
It's what does Mike Todd have for us today? What sort of a wild and crazy thing is he going to do in the service today? That's what it's about. You have people that flock to his church from other states and everything to come in and see what this guy's going to do. It's a disgrace. So in the sermon, Todd was talking about how there was a time seven years ago when, you know, he was overweight. He was like 275 pounds. He even showed a picture of himself at his worst. And he said that God spoke to him several times and told him that in order to advance the ministry, you need to get your body in check. I can't take your ministry to the levels that you want it to go if you're going to look like this. Hence the title, Fit to Finish. And he talks about how he started to work out and he ate right, got more healthy, trying to compare all this to, you know, our bodies are, you know, our temples upon the Lord. And so they need to look the best that they can. Now he emphasized that this is in no way, you know, uh, uh, you know, taking a cheap shot at people who are overweight. He said, this isn't about being overweight. This is about being healthy. He said, plain and simple. That's what it's all about. And then came the antics. And I, and by the way, I will have a clip of this. I'm going to put it down below here in the description of this video. You can watch it for yourself. It's like less than two minutes and you can watch this clown in action. On the stage were all of these different food items. You had Chinese food, you had syrup, you had whipped cream, you had ketchup, you had just everything you could think of, all up there on stage, right? And the whole setting was, you know, made to look like like a church. There were like pictures that were hung up. Uh, there were communion elements that were up there. And Todd began to throw the food at all of the different items, including the communion elements where he you know, squirted syrup and he put whipped cream all of it. And you can hear the gasps from the, the congregation here as he's doing this. And he was kind of shouting back at him saying, oh, don't act like you care about this. You're like, these are, these are just Christian symbols. This doesn't represent the true Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You act like you care about these items. And then he took it to the next step as there was a Bible that was up there on the platform and he took the syrup and he took the whipped cream and he poured it all over the Bible. And that's when you could really hear people in the congregation starting to gasp and really get upset. So he squirts the whipped cream and the syrup all over the Bible. And again, he's, you know, shouting to the congregation, quit acting like you care about these things. You don't care about these and look at yourselves. If you're not willing to take care of your own temple, but you care about these, just these Christian symbols. First, let me say this. The Bible is not just a Christian symbol. It is the infallible word of God. And when you are disgracing it. When you are trying to use this as, you know, in an illustration and requires you to desecrate a Bible, it's probably a really bad illustrated sermon to begin with. To do that, I mean, look, we already know he disgraces the pulpit on a weekly basis with his messages and his, you know, his weird stances I've already talked about. But when you then take the Bible and you pour all this stuff all over his ways to get oohs and ahs from the crowd and, you know, telling people, quit acting like you care about this. The Holy Spirit doesn't, you know, reside within these pictures or within the Bible. It resides within you. Again, quit acting like you care about it. And there was even a point where somebody from the crowd had yelled out, enough, we get it. And he says, no, you don't get it. And he just, he just kept on going, kept on going with it. Again, I just... I can't stress to you enough, this man is a clown, he is not saved, and anybody that follows him, you are only deceiving yourself. And I know there are fans and fans and tons of them out there for Mike Todd. You live for this, you're entertained by it. You, this is your definition of a, of a, you know, a godly leader. I remind you, there will come a day where anybody who calls themselves pastor, will go before the Lord and give an account of their life because pastors are held to a higher account than others. And I would just love to see Mike Todd explain this to the Lord one day. It's an absolute, total disgrace. And again, another sign that we are living in the last days as these false Christs and false prophets will continue to emerge and they will deceive many. And let me tell you something about that word many because I've said this before, and this is so important. We're not just talking about you know, a few dozen, a few hundred. No, I'm talking about millions upon millions that will be deceived by these men. 
some of the highest viewed pastors and sermons on social media today are led by these big mega church preachers like your T.D. Jakes, like your Mike Todd's, your Kenneth Copeland's, so many of them. Joel Austin, throw him, Joel, throw Joel Osteen in there too. All of them, all deceiving people. Keep your eyes fixated upon Christ in these last days. You are going to need a supernatural type of a faith to endure all that is still to come. Keep your eyes on Jesus, not these clowns. Again, I will have that link in the description. You can check it out for yourself. Let me know your thoughts. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. This is part of my ministry outreach. Of course, I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you guys up to speed and everything else going on. I do it because, yes, we are in the last days, really the final hours, and Christ is coming soon. For anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and you ask him to forgive you, He'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash not by site news link in the description or just hit the super thanks button down below on this YT video here where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you and I'll talk with you soon.